Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about utility classes in CSS and using utility classes instead of regular classes. So let's get into it. So the reason why I want to talk, and talk about this is because I had this question about a few specific frameworks regarding this sort of approach to doing CSS development. And for those of you who may not know this, there are, there are actually a few CSS architectures out there. Uh, the most common ones or the most famous ones are probably BIM, SMAX, and o Object Oriented CSS or OO CSS. Anywho, there is also one approach which, well, basically works on the approach of utility classes. Now, what is a utility class? Well, for those of you who may have used Bootstrap and all a few of these different frameworks, you will ha you will remember that they have classes such as pull left, pull right, this sort of thing. Like these uh, one, b these classes that basically just do one thing. And there are a few practices where the idea here has basically been that all right, we want to be able to have extensible CSS that produces consistent results. So instead of having a class name that is that says something like dialogue or list or something like that, you actually declare the properties that would have been in that class as their own CSS selector or CSS class, where you would have something like margin medium, margin large, margin small, um, display float, oh no, like display flex, uh, these sorts of things, like these different classes that simply, well, in essence, is just representing one property. And then what you would do is that you would compose these together in your HTML and basically style your element this way. Instead of having one selector, you have multiple ones that just do, does the styling for you. Now, the this idea was actually one of the first things that I started doing uh, when I decided that I want to get to a good level with CSS. I want to learn CSS. Because when I started out, I mean, it was as difficult for me as it is for most people. It's easy to get started. It's easy to learn the basics. But it's very, very hard to produce consistent results and scale CSS to large applications. So I decided I'm going to learn this. I'm going to really go for it. And I did all the research and tried out everything that I could think of and I, then I got, I got caught in this or I, I, I landed in this sort of approach because I thought that this was actually it was after a presentation that I watched and this woman showed the flexibility of this and I really liked it I mean I, I started using it for professional projects and I worked with it for a few months and I really I thought this was pretty great. I mean there there were a few of my coworkers back in those days who thought that and to a point I can absolutely agree because when you do something like this you basically what you what you're basically going to do is that you're going to move the duplication because there's always in CSS there's always, always some type of duplication unless you do the if you really, really focus on having a cascading effect on everything, you might be able to avoid it. But basically, you move the ugliness, or whatever you want to call it, from the style sheets into the actual HTML instead, because your HTML will actually grow and become quite bloated, especially when you have large web pages with a lot of components. So that's the thing that my co I mean, my coworkers weren't all that happy about it, but, you know, not everything that your coworkers want is going to happen, right? And that works both ways, by the by, so it's not just about me. And for a while I used this to great, I mean, I thought it was to great success. And then I came across new practices that I'm using today, but there was one thing that I realized after a while of doing, having this approach of like a, utility class first first way of working and that was that when I did this although it was very flexible for me to produce consistent results over and over and over again like being able to style an element in the exact way that I wanted to be styled was very useful especially when I wanted to create multiple elements that were similar or basically the same thing over multiple pages that was easy but what was really tricky was to identify the scope of a component. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, 
one of the limitations of this approach is that there is no when you search a big project when you're trying to figure out if this dialogue this class that represents a subsection of a dialogue or is a dialogue or whichever a component in of itself and that class that represents this component and all of its like all the styling that is associated with it you in CSS I mean in large projects you have to do a string search you have to figure out where it is because if you change that you have to be damn sure that you're not causing issues on other pages that's the biggest problem with CSS I mean in those days I didn't know this today I am painfully aware of how much risk is posed to your project whenever you have somebody who's been re trying who has tried to be clever and tried to create a generic set of selectors that is going to work all across the entire application and now you need to fix an oversight or a bug or a mistake or something like that something that was limiting in this implementation now that's super dangerous because now you don't now you need to find every single reference to this style and everything around it to figure out if your little change here is going to break a bunch of other pages and that's where this pro this is that's the one problem i had with this approach that made me switch over to well i use bem personally because when you've had all these utility classes so you have have had all this flexibility it is great for the implementer of this to use this approach but it's not especially fun for the maintainer of a project to have a utility a utility class first mindset because when you try to figure out which i mean the all these these are remember these are just property styles there's no name associated with it there's no semantics around it and they can come in any order which means that if you want to find an element that you find on one page and just check whether or not that element exists anywhere else in a really large project it's very hard for you to do that because you can't really search for it you can't just copy paste all of these class names and start searching because you may not actually find all these references and that's actually why i moved over to another way of working so what i want you to take away from this this question that they I, I was asked about having a utility class first approach to things it is great at small scale i really like it i mean it's a, it's a very efficient way of working it will produce very good consistent consistent results but you will very likely find that it will be very hard for you to regression test your CSS when you have really large projects and the project is so big that most likely there are 10, 20 people working on the same code base and you're not even involved in half of the stuff that's going on. So when you're coming to a, such a large project and you're just trying to figure out if this stuff that you're trying to change here that's already existing is going to cause a regression somewhere else. Th then th you will see that this is a very li uh, it's a very in that aspect it's very limiting but as i said at small scale it works very very well have a great day